Hey guys, how you doing? My name is Eddie Simonat. I'm a real estate investor and I'm about to share with you how I was able to buy an apartment complex at the age of 25. So as you can see, it wasn't an overnight process. It actually took four years to get to purchase my first apartment complex that I operate and manage myself. But you know, even before 2016, I still was interested in real estate, but I didn't really know how to get started. Uh, growing up uh, in the Bahamas, my granddad, he actually built his first house. And the house that he built actually had three apartment units in it that were rented out to help pay off the mortgage. So I thought that was an awesome concept as a kid. And I just didn't know really how to get in it. Uh, like a lot of people, I thought real estate just involved you know, selling houses. I didn't really know about the investment aspect of it. So it wasn't until 2016 when I actually understood the concepts of investing, right? Uh, 2016 was my first semester of my senior year in college. I went to college to study business administration and accounting. I was pretty good at it, but in just being fair honesty, it was kind of boring to me. And I knew I didn't see myself doing it for 10 to 15 years. So I wanted to find something that was, you know, more exciting to me. Uh, I looked at stocks, I looked at Forex, I looked at uh, multi-level marketing, uh, but those things didn't really seem uh, like a long-term solution. Uh, so it wasn't until I saw a real estate ad on Facebook that actually talked about investing and how to get started. So I was really intrigued about it um, and it was at a local hotel in Tuscaloosa, where I went to school at, it was like 15 minutes away to school. So and it was on a Saturday, so I didn't really have anything else to do. It was free, so I said, why not? And that was, I guess, the turning point where I actually saw, okay, well, real estate may be something I could really actually get into. Uh, at the meeting, they talked about wholesaling, uh, they talked about fixing flipping, and then they talked about uh, buying whole or rent, renting out property. But it was just an uh, overview of it didn't really explain in depth on how to do it, but it was enough for me to be interested and say, I want to learn more about it. So they actually had a three day event that was in Birmingham, that was about an hour away from where I went to school, and it was about $200 to go to the event. So, I mean, I saw it as a good investment, so I decided to go ahead and go. So that was actually in 2016, Around that same time, I was reading, I read uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I read some other books, you know, so I was educating myself all around the time when this event was coming up, uh, so I was really interested in real estate at that time. Uh, so the seminar was, uh, like I said, it was three days, and they just basically went more in depth explaining how to do wholesaling, how to do fix and flip, and how to do rental. Uh, so they went along the lines of saying you wholesale first, and then you go ahead and uh, use your money from your wholesale deals to fix and flip, and then you get into fix and flip and use those proceeds to start fix and flipping, but you end up holding one of the properties in between. So you might flip, flip, and then hold. You know, so I saw that, and you know, I saw maybe something I could do. You know, so at the event I was networking a lot too. So not only was I just taking an education, I was networking with the folks who were attending the event with me. I was introducing myself and explaining how passionate I was about real estate and how I was trying to get into it uh, in Birmingham. Uh, so it was one guy I was actually sitting next to. Uh, he was, he was uh, you know, my desk buddy at the event. And it turns out that his relative was a real estate agent for Keller Williams. And she also was an investor too. So after the event, he introduced me to her over the phone and uh, you know, I told her how interested I was and I was so ready to get going. I told her, hey, you know, I'll come to your office once or twice a week and I'll intern with you. I'll do work for free. I just want to learn more about this stuff. Uh, so she took me up on it, uh, thankfully, and I was able to go to Birmingham about two times a week uh, from my first semester of my senior year all the way to uh, when I graduated. And I would go like twice a week and I would help her, you know, run comps. Uh, I would help with sale comparables. I would help going out, uh, putting up bandit signs, 
you know, anything I could help with, you know, and uh, people don't understand, like, doing things for free, you get a ton of value from that experience as well. Uh, these these type of in-person things, you have to actually pay money for to get someone to teach you, like, one-on-ones, but for me, you know, through interning, I was able to get a lot of these experiences with little to no cost. So that was my first mentor. By the time I graduated in that fall, uh, December was coming around and we was just coming into 2017, so I had a big decision to make. So either I was gonna go ahead and try this real estate stuff out, or I was gonna go and have to go back to school for accounting to get my master's or a CPA. So I had six months of savings uh, to move to Birmingham. Um, and also I had some money saved up through my job when I was back in school and then also through me having a, a tennis scholarship in college a lot of the money that was allocated for like my college fund uh, I was able to uh, ask my mom if I could go ahead and use it in real estate you know for like a, a fix and flip deal once I learned more about it uh, so I went ahead and took the leap and uh, I moved to Birmingham and I started wholesaling. So the first wholesale deal I did was uh, in a lower income area. It was more of a rental than a, a fix and flip property, but I came in as a wholesale deal. Uh, that was in 2017. Uh, it took two months to close, and I actually found the seller from a local RIA group. So it was someone I, I was sitting next to in a local Rio. We got to talk and I introduced myself, told him what I was trying to do, was trying to wholesale. And he actually had a property that he was trying to sell. So uh, we got uh, on the phone afterward on a follow-up call and we saw where it would be a win-win for me to go ahead and list a property as a wholesale and try to sell this property quickly for him. Because uh, he didn't want to go through you know, uh, a regular uh, realtor or agent. So I did that, uh, got the property under contract for $8,000 and I sold it for $8,500 so I made a $500 profit and that's usually on the low end of like what you would expect to make on a wholesale uh, you can ask anyone who's more versed in wholesaling you know you usually can get a wholesale assignment fee of like uh, over $2,000 $3,000 per property but for me my first deal I only made 500 so it was kind of disheartening you know I didn't you know, because it was two months of hard work, and uh, the reason why I took so long, I didn't make as much, is because I didn't really have a buyer first. You know, I went ahead and found a property, and then tried to find a buyer for it. When most people teach you that you have to find a buyer first, and then find a property that the buyer is looking for, that way you can, you know, make more profit on it because you know exactly what you're looking for. I was just trying to get my first deal done to see if this thing was real or not. Uh, so I closed the deal. I saw where it was real. But I just knew that wholesaling wasn't really where my heart was. You know, some people are passionate about it. That wasn't really my passion. I was more interested in like investing. So uh, at that same local RIA, I met uh, my second mentor, uh, Denmark Properties, who are local investors in Birmingham. And they have expertise in fix and flip and lease purchases. So I saw the opportunity to possibly intern and, and, and uh, be of value to them. Uh, and you know learn a little bit more about the investing side of it too uh, and they were able to uh, bring me in and have me work in the office uh, for a few months in 2017 so from that experience they would take me out and show me their properties uh, show me how to run numbers and teach me how to invest so it was a fantastic experience and my first property I bought was actually from them too so you can kind of see just from being around like-minded people and sharing what I was trying to do, an opportunity arose where I can get my first property that I could buy and hold. So we had agreed on a purchase price of uh, 40000 I didn't have the 40000 up front to give, so I had to be creative. Uh, so I used a method called seller financing, where the seller uh, acts as a bank and holds the mortgage on the property. Uh, instead of you having to get a, a regular conventional loan. Uh, so that's what we did. Uh, we agreed to put 20000 down. The other 20000 was held as a note and it was over a nine year amortization, which is the period of the loan that I have to pay is for nine years. And the interest payment was around 8%, give or take. So the monthly payment worked out to $250. 
at the time when I purchased the property, a tenant was living in one side that was paying $400 in rent. And as I closed the property, you know, I collected a rent check within that first week of $400. So that's when the light bulb kind of clicked for me. I said, hey, you know, I really worked hard and grind for this $500 on my first wholesale deal, but I didn't do anything but close the property for this duplex. So after I closed on the duplex, uh, the second deal I did was actually in that summer, uh, the summer of 2017, and my second deal was actually a fourplex apartment, which is four units. Uh, so my first deal was two units, and now I was scaling up to four units. And I actually found this deal on Craigslist, believe it or not. Uh, so you can see, you can find deals most places off market. It doesn't have to be through the MLS. You can get creative. You can go on Craigslist, Zillow. Uh, online Facebook marketplace you can really find a deal anywhere you just gotta look it can come anywhere so my second deal was on Craigslist it was originally listed for 55,000 and uh, I ended up purchasing it for 26,000 after going to the property meeting with the uh, the seller uh, you know going through each unit seeing the condition of the unit uh, doing my estimate of repairs and seeing what type of return I wanted you know I saw where the price I would want to pay for this deal was uh, twenty six thousand. So it took it took some back and forth with me and the seller, but eventually we agreed on twenty six thousand. Uh, he wanted to go ahead and just sell the property because he was a multifamily investor. I found that out after we closed, but he wanted to go ahead and just sell and uh, roll his funds into another deal. Uh, so that was my second deal I did. I bought it at seventy five percent occupancy. It was three tenants already in there. Uh, one unit needed uh, minimal repair to get ready so you know just a uh, flooring paint uh, and some minor updates to get it ready so it ended up costing about 2500 to get that unit online and I had it that unit fixed up and rented out by quarter three of that year so it was around uh, October when I got it fixed up and rented out uh, I got a tenant in there in November uh, so yeah that was my first unit turn so it took a little bit longer now the most recent unit turn I did actually took us uh, about uh, 10 days from start to finish uh, so but you can see my first unit turn was you know it took uh, over a month uh, so it's just you know you get better as you go so that was my second deal uh, so it had a lot of deferred maintenance going into it uh, you can see by the price you know it was a discounted deal you know so it was a lot of things that needed to be fixed but fortunately uh, mo all the tenants in there were paying me rent uh, I had a positive collections going in and the new tenant that I had uh, rented to, I still have her today in 2020, and she pays on time too. And this property was in a uh, what I consider a D-class area, so you can even make money in D areas too. So uh, it's, it's all what you're comfortable with, you know. So if you if you are comfortable investing in the area, go ahead and do it. You have people who may not want to go in those type of areas. For me, I just wanted something where I can get in and uh, start getting uh, full time into real estate. So this property was actually a turning point for me. This was the point where I didn't really have to go ahead and get a job because at this point I had enough cash flow coming in from the duplex and the four unit to where I could do real estate full time. And I didn't, I've got to mention on the duplex, I actually ended up moving in one side and renting out the other side for $550 uh, to try to lower my monthly expenses. So uh, that's how I did that. So moving on to 2018, the guy that owned the fourplex, he actually was a multifamily investor. I found that out after we had closed on a deal that he had the properties. So I was telling him, hey man, I'm interested in getting into these large properties. You know, how did you do it? And he kind of shared with me how he got started as well. And I said, well, if I could find you one of these large properties, do you think we could partner on one? So uh, he agreed to that. And that's when I started looking for larger properties. So I did what's called driving for dollars. I would go out in my car and I would try to identify properties in this market that I thought would be a good deal. So I was really looking for properties that had a lot of renovation that needed to be done or they didn't have that much tenants in them uh, or it looked like it was mismanaged. So those were the type of deals I was looking for, like value add deals, highly distressed deals so I can get them at a discount. And that's what I ended up doing. That fall, um, I ended up finding a 32 unit deal that I started negotiation for. And, of uh, December 2017 so I reached out to this uh, to the person who owned the deal I found their address uh, from the property and I put it in the tax assessor website 
So I was able to find the mailing address of them and I sent them uh, just a letter. I said, hey, my name is Edward Simonette. I have two properties, two multifamily properties in Birmingham. I saw your property and I'd be interested in uh, giving you an offer uh, if we can get on the phone and talk. So she did call me and we ended up uh, getting into under contract on this 32 unit deal. Uh, so I presented it to the guy who had owned the fourplex and I told him, well, I got this 32 unit deal. I got it for a good price on the contract and do you want to come in and partner with me on this deal? And that's what we did. Uh, so he had another partner that came in, so it was three of us and we went ahead and did that. So I wasn't an active partner in the deal. I was what was called a, a LP, which is a limited partner. So usually a limited partner would bring funds into the deal. Um, so I brought some funds into the deal to help with the purchase and we had purchased this deal and uh, they managed the deal. So I didn't really have experience managing so they did the management for it. Uh, that same year, I found another deal which was the 75 unit the same way. I drove, saw the property and in this case I didn't do a mailer. I actually found where the property management office was. Uh, so the owner managed his own property. So I went in uh, early in the morning they had opened at 7, I was there at 7, and I just introduced myself to the receptionist. I told her who I was, I asked if I could speak to the owner uh, to try to see if he would entertain an offer on his property. And that's what he did, you know. Uh, this guy, he didn't really negotiate or anything like that. He was set on a price, he said his price was 10k a door, the 75 units, I worked out to 750k, and that's just where he was at. So the property was all one bedroom, one bath apartments. The rents were super, super low, they were in like the 300s, uh, but the occupancy was around 95%. Um, so I thought this was a good deal, presented it to the partners, and we ended up uh, partnering on that deal too. So that was the second like multifamily deal I had closed in 2018. So I saw it was possible, but it's not really what I wanted to do. I wanted to be more active in the, in, uh, the operating process. So I was more passive on these, and I really wanted to be active. Uh, so I ended up um, I ended up selling my ownership in these deals, parting ways with the partners, and then I ended up trying to find a deal for myself. So that summer of 2018, I did what I did again. I, I just went out, I looked for properties, and I came across this 36 unit deal, uh, the 36 unit property that we own today, uh, the landings at East Arlington. So when I found the deal, it was the same way. It was highly distressed. It was at 50% occupancy. I sent a mailer to the owner and he responded and we met uh, over lunch and then we discussed uh, this property. We ended up purchasing the deal for 400K, but originally uh, the contract was written up by 500K. This deal actually took five months to close, believe it or not. So you know, regular closing would be between two to three months. This was my first deal that I was purchasing on my own uh, with uh, family partners. Uh, so it took me five months to get funding, when I mean equity, get the financing together, which is the, the, the bank that would lend us the money. Uh, and then also, you know, do my due diligence and make sure I got my contractor bids and all my numbers were together and they supported the offer that I was making. So originally we was under contract for 500K. Through my due diligence and going through all the units, I looked at all 36 units, went through every single unit, saw the condition of every single apartment, and from my on-site inspection uh, and through the contractor bids, I told him, you know, for this deal to work, we're gonna have to come in a little bit lower. So I said I'd be able to do a purchase price of 400k, um, and then moving closer to closing, I was actually able to get a repair allowance, which is a you know a discount on that purchase price. As, as a credit on the HUD statement. So I got that for 24000 because it was uh, some more unexpected repairs that came up uh, closer towards closing. So uh, we were still able to close the deal. It worked out to where it was a win-win for both me and the seller. Um, and I ended up paying about 376 after closing on the deal. And this deal is currently being uh, repositioned. So I'm currently renovating it. Uh, originally it had 20 units that needed to be renovated. Right now we have nine more units left that's going to be renovated. We're pretty close to the finish line on the deal. Uh, so I took out a loan um, for 353k for the rehab, but my contractor bid was in at 250k. So I still had some wiggle room in there in case anything went wrong with the rehab. So when I, when I do my underwriting, everything is conservative. I always like to have a cushion in case something went, went wrong with the deal. 
you know. And when I bought the deal, it was 50% occupied and the rents were pretty low too. The highest rent on the property was 400 bucks. It was way below market. Uh, at, the, at the time of purchase, the market average was 550 bucks. So I saw the opportunity to raise the value on the property uh, by increasing rents. Um, so from closing in 2019 to now, the market value actually went up to 645. And that's where we're currently leasing units at. Uh, a month ago, we actually leased out four units at 645. So uh, that's a positive on that deal, you know. So something else I actually did this year was a sold an acre of land back home in the Bahamas. And we're going to use the funds to reinvest in the next multifamily deal. So this is an acre of land, uh, you know, non-income producing real estate uh, that was sitting for about two years uh, that my mom owned. And she sees what I'm doing right now in uh, apartment. So, you know, I said, well, why don't we just sell this property and roll the funds into the next deal that we do? Uh, so we was able to do that. I found a local agent back home who listed the property and we was able to get it sold uh, pretty quickly within you know the first six, seven months, which is pretty good for that market. Uh, so uh, we got asking price. Asking price uh, was 165. After closing, we pocketed 141. And all those funds are gonna be ro rolled into the next multifamily deal we do. So as you can see, like I said earlier, it wasn't an overnight process. It took time, but as you can see, you know, if you just stick with it, you know, you can go ahead and own an apartment. It's not that many people in their 20s who are owning apartments. It's very few, you know, so if I could do it, I think anyone else can do it. I mean, everyone has a different place they have to start, but it's, you know, it's people who are successful owning apartments. It's people who are successful wholesaling, fix and flip. It doesn't matter what part of real estate you're more interested in, you know, it's a way to get into it. You know, my way was interning, uh, educating myself and, you know, position myself financially to try to make these investments and find a great deals. So I hope you were able to take something from this video today, even if it was like one little small nugget that, you know, you could take and apply to your current situation. You know, I hope that you were able to do that. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm gonna put my social media in the description and on the video. So if you want to reach out to me, if you have any questions, just let me know. And I'll, you know, I, I want to be there to help you guys out, um, you know, to try to figure out how to get started in real estate yourself. So thanks. Stick to it. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Boom.